Hello, my name's Leslie Atherton and this is my short story, Hydra. Ruth's sobs had long ago reached the status of hysteria and had bedded down to miserable hiccups by the time John pushed her out of the slow-moving car. She didn't move straight away but chose to remain pitifully sprawled on the pavement as John's sleek black motor sped away, spraying her with what he hoped was a choking black cloud of exhaust fumes. Neurotic bitch, he thought, as a couple of minutes later he pulled over, not to retrieve his estranged girlfriend, but to tighten his tie and preen lazily while gazing into the mirror of his car. It was a vehicle first owned by football manager Daniel, and had been coveted enviously, then corruptly acquired by John. He loved it, for now, but the joy of maintaining its gleam had already been delegated to the Hungarian-run car wash on the edges of the exclusive and expensive village where he lived. They weren't great, but were definitely cheap and saved him the job of valeting it himself. Even better, the guys there loved his fame, just as all the ladies he met would go mad for his rock-hard muscles and superior spending power. Being a football coach brought with it a serious number of bonuses. God, how much Daniel had adored that car, and how brilliantly John had manipulated the poker game in which he won not only the car, but also Dan's speedboat. He tensed and relaxed his shoulder muscles experimentally as he thought of seducing the women with sleek, shapely curves who found themselves attracted to the sleek, shapely curves of his vehicles. Life was good. And now Ruth the Responsible was out of the car and out of his life forever at last. It had taken months of bone-crunching, apathy and cruelty, and still she wouldn't stop trying to change him, improve him, and turn him into a kinder, sweeter, more compassionate version of himself. That woman was full of crap. And he'd only seduced her for the challenge, and later for what her social position could give to him. And now he'd made the connections and milked her fortune dry, he couldn't have been less interested. He perpetuated the cruelty by boasting of his affairs and telling her how, without even trying, he'd not only taken Daniel's car and speedboat, but Dan's wife too. Oh, and Dan's daughter. Life was so good to John. And Daniel's honeys were good to John too, as were Sophie and Melissa and Juliet. Mmm, Juliet with her long legs and tiny waist. Ruth had listened blankly as he told her of his latest conquests. At the beginning, she'd been aghast, and he'd enjoyed that. But enjoyment turned to irritation at her gradually increasing vacancy. Why the hell didn't that woman ever get angry? He'd sometimes wondered how many more women and men he might have bedded if he could have been bothered. He'd won Daniel in the card game too, both having snorted a little too much coke and Daniel had been surprisingly easy to seduce in his drugged state. John, of course, had exploited Daniel's sexual enthusiasm, using to their seedious capacity the film cameras permanently set up in his bedroom. So now he was not only the recipient of Daniel, Dan's wife and daughter, his car and his speedboat, but also owned Daniel's pathetic, weak little soul, which now jangled uselessly, along with dozens of others, on John's life-sized charm bracelet. They were voodoo dolls, the lot of them, and natural victims. How ironic that he was hailed in the public eye as a hero. Those who was blackmailing viewed him very differently. But that was fine by John. For him, blackmailing Daniel had been an incredible pleasure. As was Checkerboard, his favourite restaurant, set within the underground dungeons at the city's part-ruined castle. It was very exclusive indeed, and equally expensive. Middle-class, careful Ruth would never have even entertained the option of dining there, despite her wealth, but Hydra, a new and lasciviously loaded lady friend, was paying tonight. Paying for a seven-course banquet in the castle's stone-floored and velvet-seated dining room, followed by bedroom artistry in Checkerboard's discreetly soundproof penthouse. Checkerboard's hanging rooms was the city's best-kept secret and had been created to satisfy the unusual requirements of only one couple per night. Catering entirely to those of the darker sexual persuasions, their waiting list was nonetheless months long. It would be John's first time, 
and he was impressed that Hydra had managed to bag the hanging room at such short notice. He enjoyed the food enormously, though they served a banquet of such epic proportions that even John's expanding waistline couldn't manage the entire seventh course. A nightcap, darling, purred Hydra, as she brushed her hand up his thigh. He belched loudly in reply. God, yeah, you want a bit of me, then? Of course he knew she did, because they all did. Despite his paunch of overindulgence, he was tall, dark, sleek, and good-looking in the way only a man who knows and loves himself can be. He was wealthy, too. He gave Hydra his best smile, snake-like and slow. She coolly took his hand, leading him to the lobby, the lift, and within just a couple of minutes, to the penthouse lair. They ordered oysters, champagne and rose petal petit fours, and she fed him dark chocolate-coated grapes crusted with gold leaf, straddling him unsmiling and seemingly unconcerned about his non-participation. Let her have her way with him, if she must. His afternoon's conquests had tied him out, and now, replete with some of the finest culinary offerings ever, he vowed to simply lie back and think of other things. Anything she wanted, she'd have to sort out for herself. He couldn't be bothered with her. He couldn't even be bothered with the car now, as he'd realised a few days ago that this stuff he coveted was only interesting when it belonged to someone else. What he enjoyed best was the thrill of the chase, which led to the challenge of acquisition. Cars, food, women, they were all the same. But Hydra seemed a little different tonight, perhaps impatient or restless. They were likely tiring of each other already, so he vowed to make this session their last. The oak chest next to the bed was open, but held no interest for John. He felt an unusual lack of enthusiasm for its specialist contents, preferring instead to let sleep drag him under. Hydra watched him snore and climbed off him. Her annoyance with his cruelty and passivity had increased each night they'd spent together. How dare he take her money and gifts and then lie back lazily, expecting the world to be hand-packaged and delivered up to him. She'd decided a while ago that tonight was to be a night of change. She wasn't the plaything any longer. It was time to see how he liked being the one at a disadvantage. Now was the time. She reached down into the chest's contents, choosing handcuffs. She worked quickly, and he, in his snoozing state, had no sensation that she'd strapped hands and feet to the custom-made steel poles especially installed at the bed's edges. He even chuckled slightly in his dreamings, perhaps at her brazen cheek bringing him here to Checkerboard's penthouse. But when she bound him further with heavy jute ropes, John woke a little and began to protest and fight, becoming more agitated still as she roughly applied the PVC gag. His legs began kicking against the restraints, and his inability to move was increasing the franticness of his efforts. Hydra smirked silently as she watched him twitch and shiver, then twitch his legs erratically, just like a helpless newborn baby. She could see the hatred in his eyes, the fear even, and for the first time since they'd met, she could see the anger too. It had always been there, bubbling under the surface, but this was the first time it had come to greet her directly. But Hydra was ready for it. John was no longer the sleazy guy who she'd allowed to seduce her with all his accoutrements of luxury living. He was an ordinary Joe, hair out of place, overweight, ugly with anger and sweaty with the results of too much good living. Of course, Hydra had encouraged his seduction of her. She had her reasons. It was part of the plan. She herself paid for their meals, her outfits, the rooms and the extras though he didn't yet know that she did this by using his cloned credit card. She'd even taken her own films of each of their nights together. They made for fascinating and valuable viewing. But the whole thing with John was nearing its end. He would be sure to check his platinum card statements at some point. Anyway, she couldn't maintain the pretense any longer, and she needed to get away from his seediness sooner rather than later. Hence the mild sedative in his wine. Later that evening, she planned to drive the car to Daniel's house and present it back to its rightful owner. She doubted John had a legal lead to stand on, should he choose to dispute the arrangement. 
She had already made sure John's mother, his lady friends and his employers at the club had been made aware of the kind of man he really was. It had been a most satisfying afternoon. Tomorrow she'd share all with the tabloids. She didn't think he'd be cock of the walk for much longer. In precisely three hours, Checkerboard's maid would enter the room as requested to remove John's chains, ropes and cuffs and would charge him heavily for the pleasure. Hydra was happy. She'd left a bag of clothes in the room that afternoon and now changed into jeans and T-shirt, leaving her red gown of seduction, paid for him, of course, draped over his body. Glancing up to the mirrored ceiling, it appeared that John was holding it up against his bloated body, perhaps testing out how it looked on himself. Giggling a little, she removed her wig and stretched it over his head, adding a smudge of red lipstick to his furious yet sleepy mouth for good measure. John was virtually unrecognisable now, as was Hydra, as she stood in front of the struggling man and allowed him to take in what and who she was. His actions slowed as the uncanny family similarity became visible to him for the first time. His head hurt. Hydra wasn't Hydra. Ruth, who had been wronged but who was now righted, had an ally. Hydra was Caroline. She was Ruth's sister, and Retribution was her name.